Okay. So let's bring up the deck list for both players. All right. On uh, we've got Aaron versus John here. Aaron playing Papa the quizzically awkward, and John playing Radafop, the tracker of bears. <laughs> tracker of bears. When I looked at John's Archon card, the first question I asked him was, so why are there no ancient bears or bear flutes in this deck? It seems like a very misleading deck title. But I'm uh, going to take a look at the control elements in both players' decks. On John's side, we see Gateway to Dees, Mind Barb. Um, as far as creature control, hand control, Pit Demon, Schuler, the Terror, some Amber control there. Going over to Brobnar, there's uh, Unguarded Camp. And I think Pile of Skulls is the one that captures Amber when uh, when an uh, enemy creature is destroyed during your turn. Yeah, so. And then we're going to see, look at the logo stuff. We got uh, Vestalon Theorist times two. Two, uh, two of those. Wow, okay. Two rares of the same type. Over on uh, Aaron's side, we also see Gateway to Dees, a uh, Mind Barb, a Rise times two, uh, with uh, a bunch of um, annoying Dees creatures as well. His Sanctum has uh, Take Hostages, Raiding Knights, and uh, those are the two uh, Amber Control elements he has in his deck. So the first couple of tur turns of the game have uh, have passed us. Not a lot of Amber generation at the very beginning. John's turn right now playing a phase shift, which is going to let him play a non-Logos card. Just deciding what to play. He's going to go with the Ganger Chieftain. He's going to let him ready uh, quick so the adventure. <clears throat> let him fight with it. So interesting interaction here. Normally, if you're readying and uh, using a ready and fight ability with a creature that isn't of the the Brobnar house, then you wouldn't be able to uh, to use it because you didn't call Brobnar. But since he used the phase shift to play the Ganger Chief and into play, that's how he's able to reap with the quick so. Back to Aaron's turn. He's going to start with a Bulwark as his only Sanctum card for that turn, and then draw back up. So John with an early board presence, um, both his logos and his bro uh, sorry both his logos and his displays seem to be pretty good uh, things to call this turn. He might instead decide to uh, call Brobnar to get that gauntlet of command back uh, onto the table. Perhaps use that anger in conjunction with a ganger chieftain attack to trade with uh, with the bulwark. Remember that these players don't know the contents of each other's deck. So uh, it might be in John's best interest to, to kill the Bulwark now with the Ganger Chieftain. Looks like he's not going to do that. So back to Aaron. Well, he is going to just attack with the Ganger Chieftain. <clears throat> he's going to put three damage onto Bulwark with his two armor. Put four on the Ganger Chieftain. I think he's... Then he plays a... I don't know what that card is. Uh, Brothers in Battle? Brothers in Battle. Thank you. It looked like a double amber card. That Brobnar signature, that Brobnar thing uh, throws me off. All right, so uh, chooses Logo, so all creatures in Logos can fight. Um, using Skirmish on the Adventurer. To uh, finish off the bulwark? Yeah, lets him draw a card and then he plays that pile of skulls that I mentioned. Pile of skulls very good if you if you can establish a uh, early board presence. Until your opponent deals with all those uh, creatures on the board, you can uh, seriously stifle your amber production. 
Right. He's going to use anger here just to ready and then reap with the Ganger Chieftain. Because he can't fight, he doesn't complete the action and then is able to use the creature after. Now he's just going to play burn the stockpile just to uh, to gain the amber. Sorry, not burn the stockpile. Okay. Uh, it's a unguarded camp, I think is what it's called. So a lot of a lot of aggressive uh, amber control here on John's side. Aaron's going to need to uh, figure out a way to build a board against this. I did mention that both players do have one copy of Gateway to Dece in their deck. John has two. Yep. But Aaron does also have one. Here comes a charrette. It's going to capture three amber on uh, from John's side. Don't know what that card is. It's a fair game. Fair game. So uh, both players will discard the top card of their deck, show their hand. So it looks like he's got four these cards, which he discarded. So it'll be four amber for Aaron. Wow. And then, of course, Aaron's got a smaller hand because he's been able to play some cards. And he shows D, so he probably has... Oh, yeah, he does have the Arise left. So okay. He does give away one. Definitely a fair game. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good, actually, for Aaron. But uh, John still has that pile of skulls. I think uh, you just call Brobnar now. You uh, you reap with the Ganger Chieftain. Use Gauntlet of Command to fight it, to fight with it. Oh, oh we're still on Aaron's turn here. Well, it's unfortunate that he does this. I guess he's not going to go if he's not getting these creatures. No, he is. Should maybe have done that before, played it out, had one fewer. That's Snudge, I think. Just got played. Yep. And Strath to five, sheds his chain. I, getting that amber was good, but um, I don't know. With John's board, I don't think uh, playing the shred there really made a lot of sense. Sorry. Well, with with the way John's board is, like playing that charrette the way he did, doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. He's going to start with a Schuler here, which uh, allows him to uh, steal one amber because he had four or more. Always a very good. Uh, very good Dece card. Yeah, I don't understand the argument. Like, being able to deny the key on this turn was a good play. So, like, I, you wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want to hold on to that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I, di I didn't realize that he was on check already. Here's a mind bar from John. Gets a follow the leader off of uh, of Aaron. Pretty stacked Deese hand. Well, except for that gateway to Deese. Now, I was talking to uh, my friend Alfredo in between oh, rounds just right. now, and we were talking about, uh, you know, if you have a board advantage over your opponent, and you, you're holding on to a gateway to Deese, like, do you just hold on to it indefinitely, or do you pitch it in hopes of drawing something better? It's like John's just going to hold on to it for now. Well, knowing that he has another one in his deck, I would have probably pitched it, knowing that it's going to be probably a few turns before it's really yeah. useful. I think he just drew his second copy. Yeah. John back on check. So that's a smash to start with, stunning the pit demon. Blood of Titans coming down on Charette. That's going to give that a little bit more survivability. Uh, looks like the remaining two cards in his hand are also Brobnar. It's a Crump. Crump gets played. Is that another Blood of Titans? Wow. It is. 
Well, I guess John was uh, happy he didn't get rid of that gateway to Dees. Is it still going to be... I don't know. Uh, I, I, I think I would have put that Blood of the Titans on uh, Snudge. Oh, yeah, you're right. Just Snudge's ability is so strong. So, so John did forge a key. He's going to call D, so I wonder if he's going to pull the trigger on the gateway here. I don't think so. I don't know. I actually like doing that. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind. It, it, would let, it would let Aaron forge a key because he has to return all that captured amber. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see that. Like, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't. So it runs so, the terror into it. Just got a judge call. Travis going to go over and uh, sort it out. I was about to tell him. I just realized we were talking earlier about how John's deck is called the Tracker of Bears, but he has no bear flutes or ancient bears in his deck. Maybe that's why Tracker's in quotations. If so, that's pretty clever. John just played out an Eater of the Dead. He's going to use the Shooter to get rid of the Smash. Control the board a bit. Doesn't look like, doesn't look like it's all that necessary to, uh, to gateway just yet. He might just wait until Aaron um, deals with his board a bit more. I feel like I would want to get rid of the Snatch more than, uh, than the Smash. Yeah, I. Hmm. He he might be trying to. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think you I think you just go Dees here. You get to use all three creatures you have on the because board. Because you're a Dominator Bobble, right? Right. Yep. Like you're gonna be like the trade is gonna be so good. Fight with Snudge, take out the adventure, get rid of the Eater of the Dead. Aaron Aaron's hand does have a lot of Sanctum cards in it, though. That's fine. Like just the. The board advantage you generate, even if you're not playing cards here. So what would you return with Snudge? It has to be a flank or an artifact creature, right? So either the dead, perhaps. Gauntlet of Command's not a bad one to return. Well, I, I might, I might like swing and get rid of the eater first, and then use it to get rid of the pit demon. So he does, he does actually choose yeah. Sanctum. He's going to start with a bulwark. On the flank, a little bit extra protection for Crump there. Looks like a protect the weak is Why? coming down on a creature. He keeps he keeps not protecting uh, Snudge. I mean, well, like, he has he has another he has another one. He has two protect the weaks in his hand. So he could be. I think he might put the other one on Charette here. Oh no! Don't make well. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. It's not just got a death wish. Okay, so he just decides to empty his hand of uh, sanctum cards. I think I think the protect the weak would have been better on the charrette. I mean, well, I, I get it. He may be afraid of giving that, like, having the Shred die and giving the Amber back. But like you said, right, like that, that Snudge is a really good control piece. Yeah. And ha forcing your opponent to run his creatures into a, what, a, a nine power charrette just to take out the Snudge. So I'm now at a point where I might, like, reap, reap and get away. For John here. Yeah, Aaron's already at check, right? So decides to go with Brobner. Plays it a troll. What's the other one you play? Uh, Pingle who annoys. Deal one to each enemy creature after enters play. Eh. I mean, the, the protect the weeks give armor, right? Yeah, so it's basically one damage to Charette. Yeah. Uh, 
He might he might use uh, Gauntlet Command to uh, fight with Troll, perhaps. Yep, that's what he does. But he's going to use it to fight the Crump. Sure, I should have taken the damage, though, right? I mean, I'm not going to worry about it now, but... No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's not... So he uses the gauntlet to send the skirmish creature back in, but... So yeah, Gengar Chieftain is going to deal the five to the snudge, kill it. Remembers the pile of skulls. Puts it on the elusive okay. creature, that's a good plan. Taking Aaron back out of check. Sorry, I was thinking of Pingle the, the, and, uh, a little bit backwards way. Now there's two gateways. Adis is burning a hole in his hand. Of course, he, he wasn't able to discard it that turn, but... And it, it, it also seems like it's going to be a while before he calls Adis again. So those, uh, those cards are going to be dead weight in his hand for maybe a turn or two more at least. D seems like the house to call this game. So he plays a Dust Imp. Do you know why the Dust Imp took one damage when it because came to play? Because the Pingle is when it, it's when another creature enters play, it takes damage. So is it, it's like an auto cannon, basically? I guess. Okay. Interesting. I guess it wouldn't be annoying if he didn't uh, do that every time he played. He's gonna use, uh, yeah, he's gonna use the uh, Dominator bottle to fight with Crump. It looks like it's gonna kill him, right? Because Crump is what eleven health. Yeah, but he's got three uh, shield, three armor. Yes, right. Because of Bulwark, so I guess he can eat a three power creature for free if he wants. I mean, the elusive is going to be annoying. I think what you do is you attack with Charette. If you want to get rid of that guy, attack with Charette and then attack with Crump. He's going to kill the adventurer instead. Pingle's, like, Pingle does, is a problem for both sides, so... No, Pingle only deals it to enemy oh, creatures. Enemy, great, sorry. Yeah. Autocannon's the one that deals it to everybody. And let's see if he fights or reaps. I like... Uh, I like fighting here, maybe. Oh, well. No, no. Don't fight the Pingle. No, Pit Demon. Take care of the Pit Demon, but... So, uh, I think he's just going to reap instead. So that puts uh, Aaron back in check. I wonder if John's more willing to, to uh, pull the trigger on Gateway now. I, I like a I like a steel and amber, reap and amber gateway. Let him have this key. The problem is though, uh, if you gateway, you're also giving uh, you're giving your opponent four amber back, which would put him I think within striking distance of key number two. Well, I would give him key number two unless there was stuff that was stolen. Is that eight amber now? Yeah, that would put him at twelve amber exactly. Well. You could steal an Amber with Pit Demon first sure. before Gateway, and that would put you at 11. Uh, but you're also giving him the Amber from Dust Imp. Oh, that's true, yeah. Three no, things. I've, yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like I get into the, that situation a lot. With with gateway to Dees, like when you're really far behind, gateway to Dees is super appealing. But then it gives you three chains, and Keyforge being what it is, the opponent very likely can just barf out a bunch of creatures on the following turn. Well, if you need to be able to bring some creatures out yourself after you do it. Yes. So he does call Dees, and looks like he does. Does gateway? Yeah. Now I don't. Yeah, it looks like John does gain. Yeah, he does remember the two amber. 
So Aaron lost one from Pit Demon to Pit Demon, but now he's just effectively gaining six amber as a result of uh, that gateway going off. Interestingly enough, it still is not enough for John to... Now, does Kena John have anything like burn the stockpile or any other no. mega amber control? No. Yeah, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be the end of John's turn. Aaron gets uh, a key now, possibly a key later. So that, that six amber puts Aaron on the board. One key. See a uh, bunch of Brobnar stuff in his hand. But I think Deese is the, the house to call now. Starts with a Schuler, a timely Schuler as always, stealing or st stealing one amber from his opponent. Follows it up with a succubus. That's going to put some draw pressure on John. In addition to the chain, the chains that he has from Gateway to D, so that's going to force John to deal with it right away. And that's going to let him uh, with the Dominator bobble. Looks like he's set up for a very good Brobnar turn uh, next turn. Meanwhile, John's hand has a bunch of logos, has a reverse time, library access. That's a card he's going to start with because he calls logos. He's going to let him draw through a significant portion of his deck, provided he's able to keep the chain going. Well, yeah. So uh, the uh, something theorist, the Vestal on theorist is the first card played. Gets to draw a card right away. And I think uh, John is uh, explaining to him. It's portable wormhole or something. Poppy no, Universe, yes. That card is just like Safe Place, right? It's basically Safe Place, but a Logos version. Okay. Sounds like it. And then there's a reverse time. D is he remembering to draw cards from his deck when he does yeah. that? Okay. Uh, he, did, he didn't do it in the right order here, but that's not the end of the world. Yeah. So with... No, no, up there. Yeah, so with... Uh, when you have a library access active, uh, whenever you play a card, the very first thing you do is draw a card yeah, your off reaction, the Your passes. reaction to it happens before you... Use the card effect. So in the case of uh, reverse time, you would draw a card, then gain an amber, and then resolve the effect of uh, reverse time. I don't think John's drawn a single card off library access, because he only has three cards in his hand. No, he, he drew. Yeah? So he missed one, but... They should, they should never be able to get before below four cards. Okay, good. They got the succubus. That would have been enough to go over and... <laughs> he drew the library axis again. Draws one less card from the succubus and the chain. Unfortunately, that, that turn didn't uh, end up doing a lot for John. Let Aaron forge the second key right away. And then, lickety split, he uh, reaps for two more amber, plays out an ember imp, which is rough because... Well, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't have more than two of any kind of card, so it's not the way of the world. Another gateway. There's the other gateway. Brutal. I mean, a brutal for uh, brutal for John. I mean, you have to do it. You have to do it. But I mean, this this is one of those situations where playing a playing a gateway like that. Your opponent's still sitting on four amber and on game point, effectively. Yeah, I don't think he minds. Lose. Well, we'll see. I don't know if he's going to... The burn the stockpile wasn't going to be useful. 
He's at six, so he's going to be able to forge the key. He's not going to get to the seven that he needs to do for burn the stockpile. So I think Aaron will call Brobnar here, most likely. Dump a bunch of those big creatures I see. Headhunter, Troll. I see an Anger as well. Gives him a free reap this turn. Actually, that would put him on uh, match point. Yep. Right? You can play uh, War Drummer, play Troll, use Anger, gain an Amber to ready. And then uh, reap. So let's see if he sees that line. Indeed, he sees it, so he uses the anger to ready the troll because there's nothing to fight. He gets to reap with the troll instead, and that's going to put him on match point. Uh, yeah, now it's up to John. I don't think I see anything that can control uh, uh, any amber control in his hand. I see a coward's hand. I see a library access. He could try to go for a Hail Mary with a library I access, but I don't think he has anything. His unguarded camp that came back might get him there. I think the one Deese card in John's hand is the Terror. If it was Schuler instead, he'd be able to steal an Amber, but as it is, I don't think he has anything. Let's see what we got going here. The Tingle Who Is The Noise is back. Yep. Guess he was near the top of the deck to draw back into. Yep. John remembering he has to forge a key, so that's going to put him at two keys. But I don't think he has the rest. His only thing was having the unguarded camp back. Yeah, if there was a way for him to kill something, or then he could capture an amber with the pile of skulls. Oh, sure. Uh, but I don't think... Well, he could play Coward's End here. But actually, no, Coward's End doesn't do anything. No, that's fine. So. Be... <coughs> So yeah, people like he's got a gallon of command, so Command so So how did how did the damage go on uh, the troll? Did he fight? So how was the troll damaged? Oh cause it, yeah. How did the troll damage? He was pingled. Oh sorry. There, I gotta go, I gotta fix it. Okay. Yeah, it's so similar to um, it's so similar to auto cannon. I think I feel like he used Gauntlet of Command to fight. Oh no, I think John's reading the card. Yeah. See, I, so then the the correct play then in this scenario is you have to use Gauntlet of Command. To use Troll to fight the Headhunter. So you're going to use Gauntlet of the Command to use you know, use Troll to fight the Headhunter. Killing it and damaging Troll. <clears throat> then when you play Coward's End, you can capture another Amber. That's how you would... Uh, that's the correct... That's the proper line here, I think. He just... Uh, he needs to see it. He just... He didn't read Pingle, right? That was it. Well, he can't Pingle, right? It does, enemy that was a case of him misreading Pingle, right? But he can just gall it here to get the capture to yep. prevent the steal. So he can delay he, he, here. He can capture two amber here. He can he can gauntlet kill the headhunter. Then he can coward's end. And now that the troll is un damaged, it lives and then the troll dies. He just needs to see that line. Even if he does that, that's going to put him in a, a still an uphill battle because he needs to get five amber before um, before Aaron gets uh, two more. Or Aaron can just simply kill the troll if he has a way of doing it. I mean, yeah, coward's in. So that's going to kill the troll, the other troll. He gets to capture another amber as a result. Yeah. And that's going to put John at six chains. <laughs> I've, I've actually never seen anyone get to seven or more chains so far. Yeah, I've never seen someone get to seven. I mean, that'll exist when people are starting the game with chains. It's pretty tough to get there yeah. within a game. I mean, that's definitely the kind of thing you're going to start to see when they start implementing the chain system yeah. in the app. 
I don't think, uh, I think there's still a bunch of Sanctum cards left in Aaron's deck. Uh, here's Aaron's oh. gateway. <laughs> okay, that's uh, get some two amber backs. So. Yeah, why not? If I was Aaron, I wouldn't play any creatures out if I had any. Just, just so I wouldn't have the opportunity of getting them stolen. Oh, he's gonna go follow up with the arise though. Yeah, I think he did. Nice. Get that. Oh, Schuler back. So, so none of those really, with the exception of Charette and uh, Dust Imp, really affect the board all that much. No. John's already played both his gateway to Deces. Aaron's got to be thinking, okay, well, like, what are the likely? What's the likelihood that he has yet another sweeper in his hand right now? Well, I mean, I just think you just go take the chance. Yeah. Captures one, plays Ember Imp. So John's gonna have to deal with that if he wants to play more than two cards this turn. Plays a Succubus. Yeah, just play everything out. Dust Imp on the flank. In case of any Positron Bolt shenanigans. And uh, smudge, smudge, smudge again. So that puts uh, that puts him on four chains. He's going to draw one card, lose a chain, and that's going to put John in a very uncomfortable position. Not sure what he can do to get out of this. Well, the first question is: Can you stop the key? He does have another another gateway, so he can't wipe. Oh, he reversed time, didn't he? he? That's time. why he got. That's why he got the other gateway. But but. Uh, uh, Gateway is not going to do anything. I don't know if he has a steal there. Oh, I think he did reverse. So actually, he, he does. Did he did reverse time incorrectly. Yeah. He does have. Uh, he does have pandemonium in his in his hand. See the see the problem is, yeah. It's it's the dust imp that foils this plan, because now he's at eight amber. Uh, I think John only has two creatures in his deck. Or sorry, in his hand, two Dece creatures in his hand. Yeah. And so he can only capture two of them with Pandemonium. Right. Or maybe it's, it's not, not Pandemonium. Pandemonium. It's Gongoozle or something like that. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't do much, but right. yeah, that's the game. Okay, very well played by Aaron. Uh, this was a this is an example of despite having a bunch of sweepers in your deck, and I know this from personal experience. Sometimes you get to a point where you're so far behind that even uh, clearing the board means well, you need like, to wait. Like, you're, like if you're just clearing the board and you're not making any gains on amber on your own yeah. side, like postponing forever isn't going to win you the game. So do you think if you played uh, Gateway to Diesel a little bit earlier when his opponent had all those taunt effects on his? No, I don't. I don't think. 